Good morning. I'm Becky Yakino. I'm the respiratory therapist here at Shenango Memorial, and I'm going to be showing you a little bit about CPAP and BiPAP specifically on our residential healthcare facility. Um, to start with, the main differences between CPAP and BiPAP CPAP is one continuous pressure, where BiPAP is two. So for people that have sleep apnea, they normally will have a CPAP device because all they need is to open their airway so that they breathe continuously throughout their sleep cycle. With BiPAP, it's usually more um, indicated for people that have respiratory failure. So people that have an increased carbon dioxide level, BiPAP works as a non-invasive ventilator, so it helps to ventilate the patient more than a CPAP generally would. Most patients that are on BiPAP will have oxygen added into their machine, where people with CPAP for simple sleep apnea don't usually require oxygen because once their um, airway is open, they don't need the oxygen because they breathe spontaneously. Okay, Pressures. The difference in the pressures between the two machines, CPAP is, as I said, one pressure. So the doctor will simply write CPAP 10 centimeters of water, where with BiPAP there'll be two pressures list listed, an inspiratory pressure and an expiratory pressure. So it would be something like inspiratory pressure of eight, expiratory pressure of four. Some of the machines at home do what's called auto cycle, and an auto cycle would be where Every breath the patient takes, the machine adjusts itself for that. So if a patient is on an auto CPAP, it may be set as four to 16 as the pressure setting. And then if the patient only needs a pressure of four for this breath to open their airway, that's what they get. If they need a pressure of 16, it'll go up to that and it'll fluctuate with each breath. Same thing with BiPAP. You have your inspiratory pressure and your expiratory pressure. When they adjust themselves, it also adjusts those pressures. Now, EPAP, the expiratory pressure on a BiPAP, is very similar to PEEP on a ventilator. What it does is it leaves some air pressure in the lungs to help open up the alveoli to help oxygenate. With a BiPAP, sometimes you'll also have a rate. So it may be set at, say, 8 over 4, and then a rate of 12. That just helps to augment that patient's breath 12 times a minute, regardless of whether or not they're taking a good spontaneous breath. As far as the machines themselves, they almost look identical. There's really not a lot of difference. You actually sometimes have to look at the machine to see what it says on it, whether it's a CPAP or a BiPAP. The same thing with the masks. Masks are universal. A CPAP mask is exactly the same as a BiPAP mask. There's lots of different styles. You can have a nasal mask, which just goes above the bridge of the nose to the top of the lip. You can have a full face mask, which also goes from the bridge of the nose, but down below here. And you can have nasal pillows that rest against your nostrils. And they all are um, set for that specific patient. They come in different sizes, small, medium, large, and they have different adapters. Some of the nasal pillows are bigger or smaller, depending on what the patient's nostrils are. Another option that's available on CPAP and BiPAP is what's called the ramp option. And ramp is where the pressure starts low and builds its way up to the preset, per, um, preset pressure. That allows the patient to become more comfortable as they're first putting it on, drift off to sleep, and then by the time that they fall asleep, the pressure works its way up. It's much more tolerable for most patients. The other thing that some patients will have and not have is humidity. Humidity is added in with a heated element or it can be just a pass over. Anytime you use a humidifier on a CPAP or BiPAP, you need to make sure that you're only using sterile water here in our facility, distilled water for patients at home. Never, ever, ever use tap water, okay? So this particular machine is a CPAP and our CPAP setting is six centimeters of water. We have a ramp set on this machine at four, and to see that, we're gonna turn our machine on. And initially, it'll say our setting is six. I'm gonna push the ramp button so that you can see the ramp is set at four. You can tell that the ramp is on because of this little triangle here. This is our heater telling us the heater is on, and it's set at a um, level of three for the humidity. Okay. 
If you need to add oxygen into these machines, this little adapter here is what we use. The end, we cut oxygen tubing, attach it here, and then we set the flow at the flow meter. Here's where we have it attached, and this is what our flow is, two liters per minute. And we like to label the tubing as it goes to the flow meter so that you know specifically that that is what is hooked up to the oxygen and not their cannula. Initially setting up the machine, we have our tubing that goes to our mask. We're going to attach our oxygen initially, goes to the machine, tubing goes on to the adapter, so it looks like that. We're also going to add humidity, so we open up the water chamber, pull it out, and then we are going to fill it with sterile water only to the fill line. Once it's full, you're going to slide it back in and close the top. Then you're going to adjust and fit your mask to your patient. This is a full face mask, so we're going to go from the bridge of the nose to the bottom of the lip. When you first put it on, if you can get your patient to help you, it's great. Otherwise, you might need a couple extra hands. You're going to get your mask to fit softly against the face. And then you're going to use your Velcro straps to adjust. And you don't want to over tighten it because if it's over tight, it's going to be uncomfortable for the patient. And then they aren't going to want to wear their machine. As you check for leaks, sometimes you may notice that there's a small one that isn't affecting anything. As long as the um, patient is tolerating well, you don't need to worry about that too much. There is one spot that you will feel air coming out with this particular circuit. It's this little spot here. This is called a castle port. This is what allows the patient to exhale. Some of the masks from home will have it built into the machine or into the mask. That's called a whisper valve. Those are the only spots that you should normally feel air flowing. Do not occlude those holes because if you do, then the patient has no ability to exhale. Okay, as far as cleaning our equipment, daily we want to take apart the tubing and the mask and wash it. So you'll disconnect your tubing. This and the mask are washed with warm water with a mild detergent. Rinse it with sterile water afterwards and then hang it to dry. Set your mask on a paper towel and let that dry as well. The other thing you're going to need to do is every two weeks you want to take this little filter out of the back, wash that with, with the mild soapy water, rinse it with sterile water, and then let it dry before you put it back into the machine. Every six months that should be replaced. Cleaning the humidifier chamber, you'll want to open up the chamber, remove the humidifier. You need to push in on this little spot here, gently lift it up, drain out any excess water, wash it with the mild soapy water, rinse again with sterile water, and then when you refill it, you want to make sure, again, that you only fill with sterile water. You can place this back into the machine with the water in it and it'll be ready for use. Obviously you've seen these around the facility. If your machine becomes dusty, you can take a wet wipe, wipe it gently off the outside and just let it air dry. If you ever have any questions with your patient's CPAP or BiPAP, Respiratory is here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can contact us using the office cell phone. That number is 373-0233. For equipment failures and that type of thing, um, call, contact us first, and then we also need to contact the home care company that provided your equipment. Usually it's professional home care. If you have a need to look, there are two different user manuals that we have on the units in the RHCF reference notebooks. So if you have a question on cleaning or you can't quite remember what we said, you can go ahead and look up your own information. 
Okay, thank you.